Okay, Pops, you and I, we all know we haven't bought a car in a very long time. Supposedly, we help people go through the process, but yes. we actually have a special guest today. He's actually my co-host over on the YAA Electric channel. Come check it out, Plugged In, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, over on that channel. Justin Fisher, he's on the YAA team. He actually bought himself on the team? just the other day yeah. a Hyundai Ioniq 5 at MSRP. I thought, let's get him on the show. Let's yeah. figure out how the hell he did it, and maybe he can shed some light for our audience. Absolutely. All right. You can pleasure. grill him too. What? You can grill him too. Like make sure. I can drill him? We'll work on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Enlighten us, Justin. It was a lot of hard work. I wish it wasn't like that, but I'll be honest. I had to spend a few hours coordinating, documenting, researching, and figuring out exactly who in 2022 was willing to sell me the Ionic 5 that I love at MSRP. So in summary, it was a lot first of First question, first question, yes, first sir. question, first. You said a few hours. I'm calling BS on that, man. You probably spent what, like 20 hours? Come on, let's be real. Yeah, How much that, time went that into was, this? That was going to be my first question. <laughs> what, what, what's the real amount of time you spent doing research? Probably 12 hours. Only? Yeah. If you stay, what would your wife say? If you stay organized, you can get that <laughs> done in 12 hours. I had a 500-mile, very generous radius. 12 hours was enough. There's only so many Hyundai dealers around. So that's what the research work was, was, was like learning about different dealerships? Yes. Contacting the dealers within my region to see which ones were being upfront with their over MSRP markups, which ones were being upfront about unnecessarily dealer add-ons that I did not want, and then figuring out which ones would even sell to someone out of state because I've never purchased out of state before, but uncertain times call for strange measures and that's what I had ended up having to do to get this ionic 5 um did you use the same introductory email to with each dealer so uh, there's really two routes you can take when going through this crazy ridiculous process you can either make phone calls if you're impatient like me or make sure and get everything written from the outset and send emails and then eventually they might end up being text messages I was actually making phone calls why? Because I was impatient and I wanted to know like, okay, I've got an hour of free time. Which dealers are willing to work with me at MSRP? So after making those phone calls, yeah, we did end up going through the email communications because I knew from the beginning I need to get this in writing if they're claiming to offer a good deal. What the tax man taketh, YAA giveth. Now through April 18th, get 20% off. Just type in tax. Now, uh, just out of curiosity, when you when you would call a particular dealership, who would you ask to speak with? The new sales team, because they also had the usually other brands there too. I mean, lots of Hyundai dealers were surprisingly small, so I had to navigate my way to the new Hyundai sales team. Okay, so you you spoke to a salesperson as opposed to a, a new car manager. Yes, and I thought long and hard about this, but. I thought I could probably learn something from how they handle my questions, just the salesperson. Some of them clearly didn't know a single thing about the Ionic 5 EV. They would even tell me, yeah, I don't know much about the EVs. And then I knew from there on that maybe I wasn't quite going down a path that I should pursue. So I actually found it to be a valuable experience. Wow. Do you think you could become a, a trainer at a dealership <laughs> to teach salespeople how to handle a... Uh, what we in the business would call a phone opportunity? Well, I will say that the dealer that I ended up doing business with was very, very informed on the Ionic 5 and very pro-electrification and had a specially trained staff that knew all about the car. And once I ended up finding those types of dealers, the whole experience was transformed. And I was really encouraged to continue seeing where that would take us. Wow. So that that's pretty much an indictment on the industry that most of the salespeople that you're going to come in contact with aren't particularly well-versed or well-trained in the products that they're selling. Yeah, it's the unfortunate truth. I don't think it's EV specific either. We see lots of comments and, and a lot of people are much more interested in the cars that they're buying than the person selling it. And that becomes a big kind of friction mm -hmm. point in the sales process. I want to dive into a little bit about your strategy. I know from, from chatting with you, obviously we do the show together, you contacted 30 different 
Hyundai dealerships. Talk to us a little bit about, I know you create a spreadsheet as well. Like let's really, you're, you're a scientist by background, okay? You're a biologist. Like walk us through your, your scientific method here because I think if I'm not mistaken, up on the YA website, it's like kind of like a checklist. Uh, you know, you wrote a post to a company, this video talking about and giving people the resources to actually do what you did. Walk us through your process and I want to pressure test it against Papa Shevska, not drill, grill. Okay. Grill. 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 Oh, we're going to grill. Oh, uh, you, you, so you, would you want a steak or chicken when we grill? Would, would I get a stamp of approval at the end? <laughs> More than likely, yes. I think you already have uh, because I already know that you bought the vehicle at MSRP. So that right there deserves a stamp of approval. So, yes, you'll definitely get that. All right. So the secret to my success, my secret sauce, was to set my boundaries. How long was I willing to wait because half of these cars are sailing the high seas on some gigantic boat that hopefully doesn't catch fire and sink to the bottom of the ocean? Mm -hmm. And how much am I willing to pay? Am I willing to pay just MSRP? 2000 over? 5000 over? Or even 10000 over? No. And then how far was I willing to travel to pick up my new car? Those were the main questions that I had to decide on my own at the beginning. What's, what am I going to do? What am I willing to do? Am I desperate for an EV or am I willing to be patient to play it smart? And everyone's going to have to make that decision buying any EV in 2022, especially the Hyundai Ioniq 5. And then I knew that I needed to remain organized. Otherwise, I would end up wasting my own time and calling the same dealer twice accidentally. <laughs> Nobody's got time for that. So I had my spreadsheet and the data that I kept on my spreadsheet was first the name of the dealership, the state it's in. Do they have any inventory now? What are their incoming allocations? We'll talk about that in a minute. Do they sell at MSRP? I had to be very upfront when I asked the salespeople about that question. Do you sell at MSRP, yes or no? If you have a markup, what is it? Do you sell out of state? As you can see, this spreadsheet had a lot of columns. Yes. Yeah, it was was not too fun, but uh, it ended up, being a successful strategy in the end. Like I said, I decided to make phone calls, so I did also record the name of the salesperson that I spoke with, so that if they end up trying to change the game later on, I had some way, some form of recourse to say, well, I spoke with Jimmy over here, and Jimmy said it's at MSRP. Can you bring Jimmy into the conversation? You know, and see exactly how it would go from there. And then I ended up just recording data and then using that data to decide which dealers I wanted to pursue a purchase with. So out of curiosity, you you got in touch with 30 dealerships. Unfortunately, yes. You created this, this uh, as I like to call them, a giant-ass spreadsheet. <laughs> okay. Uh, you asked each dealer the same questions. Yes. And out of the 30 that you called, th- how many were amenable to selling a vehicle at MSRP? Four. And out of those four... Four out of 30. Yes. And out of those four, I think two of them said, we are for now, but that may change soon. Uh, It's rough out there. And and that may change soon would be the instant you said you wanted to buy the car. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I was considering giving up. I'll be honest. And I know a lot of EV, EV buyers in 2022 have given up and decided to try again another day, but I, I... persevered and through a little bit of luck and coordination and patience made it through. Okay. I, but I would put one asterisk on that. It's not just EV buyers. There's buyer fatigue across the board and we're seeing it in the car dealer reviews that we have back on the website. I mean, there's a lot of really like horror stories, but then you see like the wins and people are just like so it's like a weight off their shoulders because a lot of people need to buy a car and they they don't want to pay a $5,000 markup. So it's EVs, it's ice, it's hybrid, it's everything in between. And it's a testament to how much work has to go into actually getting it done nowadays. Which yeah, is... what's, what are those 12 hours worth? Exactly. And I thought long and hard about this. And I also thought about my $250 one-way plane ticket to New York to pick up the car. But when I was looking at the fact that my family needed a reliable vehicle, and sure, we could find a reliable gas-powered or hybrid vehicle, but we really wanted something to keep for the long term, and I'm passionate about EVs. My wife's passionate about EVs. We decided it was worth the hassle to go out of our way and get this vehicle. However, we weren't willing to pay over MSRP. Well, let me ask you another question. So you you contacted the 30 dealers. Out of the 30 dealers, there were four that said 
okay, we sell at MSRP, and two of those four said, and that could change at any moment. What was the largest amount of additional dealer markup out of the 30 dealers that, that the dealerships might have asked for? In Maryland, there was a dealer asking for 12000 over MSRP, putting the car that I purchased right around seventy grand. Nope. Is that dark cars? Uh, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I'd be curious because I've seen their wow, name that, pop up. That, that, okay, so, so at the very least, you saved $12,000 compared to this one dealer in Maryland. Yeah, and I would confidently say that the average dealer markup for an Ionic 5 on the East Coast is right about 5000 over MSRP for any given trim. That's $600 an hour. Wow. So, so you, yeah, so you saved, so you saved at minimum $5,000. Yeah, I'm confident. uh, At maximum $12,000. Yeah, and my local Hyundai dealer down the road, they had some base trim Ionic 5s, which I wasn't really interested in, but they were selling those at MSRP with $3,000 in required dealer add ons. So I just crossed that off the list pretty quickly. Of, Of the 30 dealers, how many, said that there were required add-ons, just out of curiosity. About, I'd say a third of them. Wow. But who who knows how many more could have brought that up later in the process, later in the discussions. I was going to ask, when when you did your dealer surveys, in essence, uh, did you ask what the dock fees were at each dealership? I was referring to our YAA resource on dock fees. That's what I was starting from. And um, I knew I knew I didn't want to do business in a few states. I believe Florida was one of them. Yes. I was going to ask, Justin, what was your experience like in the F&I office? Because we know you bought the car at MSRP, which is a huge win. But what happened there? Did you end up walking away with a extended warranty or something like that? I came prepared. I had a pretty good understanding of what they might offer me in the F&I office. I was surprised when I walked out of there in well under 10 minutes. I signed who knows how many papers after making sure that I knew what I was signing. But they did offer the extended warranty products. I only had to decline it one time, which is a big win. Wow. Yeah, big win. And then I was done. So they were very straightforward. And I actually asked the gentleman, so what's your strategy with this F&I process you have going on here where you're not really making this miserable? And he said, well, I get to sleep well at night. And I said, all right, kudos to that. Yeah, God bless him. Did you get his name? I'd I'd like to meet that gentleman. (laughs) Oh, we'll we'll, we'll find him. We'll make sure and bring him him over for an interview. (laughs) Well, we'll we'll send him a Ray Shevska stamp of (laughs) approval along with your salesperson and that dealership. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, let's give them a quick shout out. I know you wrote on the on the YA car dealer reviews uh, for Hyundai 112. You put a nice review in there that anyone can go read and see, but it was Hyundai 112, correct? Yeah, Hyundai 112. Manny is the Ionic 5 specialist salesperson at Hyundai 112 in Long Island, New York. I believe it's in Medford. And Manny, he knows everything about the car. And you can tell he's passionate about EVs. He knew knew a bunch of tricks and gadgets that I didn't even know the Ionic 5 had, and I had spent countless hours researching the vehicle before. We spent, we, we spent about 30 <laughs> minutes inside of the car learning exactly how it works. And I honestly, I felt like I left the dealership empowered. And that was something I didn't even expect. I thought they might toss me the keys and say, here you go. Here's your MSRP Ionic 5. Just take it and run. But no, it's a good experience. Thank, wow. thank you, Manny. Congrats, <laughs> that, on, congrats on your new baby, by the way. Aw. <laughs> well, that that is wonderful that that Manny is uh, passionate about the car, knowledgeable about the car, and uh, passionate about taking care of his customers, uh, whether they paid MSRP or more, whether they bought an extended warranty or not, um, and and I think Manny will end up being rewarded. Um, over the course of time for having that type of uh, attitude when it comes to taking care of people. Yep. Well, guys, this is a perfect testament to what you can accomplish, whether it's an EV, whether it's a Chevy Tahoe, it doesn't really matter. It's a lot of legwork, a lot of hard work. Part of obviously what we try and do here at YAA is take down some of that time that you have to put into it, get paired up with a coach, go on the community forum, have resources by your side, and just base level just don't do the twelve thousand dollar additional dealer markup um so get yourself educated before well you're doing you know this if process. you don't want to spend 12 hours um and you just want to you just you know you just want it over and done with go ahead and spend that extra 12 grand 
Okay, maybe not. Yeah, please don't listen to my father on this occasion. Um, but Justin, thanks for coming on. Also, give a quick plug for the YA Electric Channel and the Plugged In Show. People should be tuning in there as well, right? Yeah, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern, we'll be talking about all things EVs from the latest news, the latest EV models out, ownership experience, and if you have any sort of questions relating to EVs, plug-in hybrids, hybrids, anything under the moon, just let us know. And and may I make one suggestion why don't you see if you can get manny on as a guest one day okay i was told out of the whole dealership manny would be the only employee that would probably love to do that we'll make it happen sounds like a plan yeah well thanks for coming on the uh, ya channel justin thanks for sharing your experience and thanks for inspiring us to remind us that this is possible congratulations on a getting your ionic five and b earning the ray shefska stamp of approval (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.